to start. So I would say my first sort of community effort uh, with OpenStreetMap, other than like, hey, I went to an Airbnb, I'm going to map it, was um, I, I wrote my master's thesis on this forest, this forest in Central Florida. And it turns out that while I was writing this thesis, the Central Florida Expressway Authority was planning a toll road through this forest. And so um, I started like the grassroots re resistance, sued the county, sued the other county. Uh, anyways, so while we were doing this, um, I also got, did a, I don't know what it was. There was like an open street wrap, hey, have a little map event. So I did, and we went and I taught people, we met at a Panera and I taught people how to uh, edit OpenStreetMap using Osmand and uh, so that I could create a little PDF map for people to use. Uh, people who weren't using OpenStreetMap or Gaia GPS, it's really hard to get people to switch. So, um, so just, uh, just a little context in Orlando, the most told uh, metropolitan area in the United States. And here is this green blob, Split Oak, which we mapped. Yay. And we named the little, the little areas. Uh, and some of these I named in my thesis, like the like Lake One, Two, and Three. They didn't have names, so I named them. Um, that was fun. The easiest thing to get people to map was trail markers. That, that was easy. Everything else was hard. And bat boxes and bird boxes. They didn't tag them very well, but at least they mapped them. Okay, so uh, after I did all this stuff with Split Oak, the this nonprofit organization statewide noticed what I was doing. And um, I was working as sort of like a part-time GIS consultant and mostly just suing people. So I wasn't doing a lot of work uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And then this nonprofit called the Florida Native Plant Society um, started, they opened up a new position. So I'm the second hire for this um, statewide small nonprofit, 5,000 members. We are the Florida Native Plant Society. And unfortunately we have a Google Maps web map on our um, main page and uh, I can't, I mean, I'm not very, very tech savvy. I mean, I have a degree in GIS, but you know, I'm not not enough to convince our web person to change the map and make it very easy for her. And also, you know, if you look at if you look if you zoom out and look at Florida, you know, it really does not look very awesome. There's like some random green blobs. This is like this is all me. I mean, I did all that. I did I did all this stuff here. All the wetlands. All the Basically, almost all of these conservation boundaries are me, uh, although Gainesville has pretty active mappers. And then we have a bunch of people in Miami, but oh, and we only have one chapter in Miami, and it's not even our largest chapter. So <laughs> uh, anyways, so that's something I would really like to get done, and I really don't know how to get it done and to make it easy for my web developer, who's great. And then Another thing I've been sort of doing on the side is iNaturalist. I don't know how many of you here are familiar with iNaturalist. Okay, we get some thumbs up. Um, okay, so I love iNaturalist and it makes me crazy that the base map is Google Maps. Why is the open street map? Why is a why is a open source project have a base map that's Google? Um, that's insane. Now, of course, yes, details view on OpenStreetMap. Okay, so if it happens to be a place that I've edited, which I have certainly not edited Frenchman's Forest Natural Area in Southeast Florida, this is the first I've heard of this place, um, but sometimes it helps because I have added the conservation area or sometimes there's OpenStreetMap data. Anyways, still not the main base map. So we have this nice INAT forum and back in 2019, Christian SW asked, we should have OpenStreetMap. Lots of people chimed in. Yay, yay, yay. We got some staff. Um, but still nothing has happened. So I would like this to happen. Can we make this happen? Thank you. Uh, OK, back to my job. Uh, we have chapters. I mentioned we have chapters. Uh, we have 34 chapters throughout the state of Florida. And we have one chapter who my web developer, same person, has kindly learned about my interest in OpenStreetMap and I guess found whatever, this is a get simple theme. Um, I forget who we're hosted by, Fuel. Is it Fuel for this one? Anyways, so she figured out a slippy map for OpenStreetMap. And then as soon as she put that in, I edited all this in. <laughs> um, so it looks better. 
So I, but this is the only chapter that has an open street map location map for its meetings. And so, and this is my chapter, the Pine Lily chapter, um, no map. Okay, I tend to give short presentations. So I'm done. All right, so I'm going to talk about mapping uh, public art in OpenStreetMap, so calling it OpenStreetArt. And so part of what started this was, you know, everything being closed for the pandemic, but even beyond the pandemic, um, I think public art's a great way to get folks uh, involved and interested in art because it's something anybody can go experience. You don't have to pay money to go to a museum or go to some special place. Um, and so thinking about like what public art is, um, you can define it lots of different ways. I mean, essentially it can be anything that you see as a piece of art in your community. Um, I don't think there's a strict definition of it. Um, in what I've been doing, it's mostly been government uh, owned art and permanent pieces like sculptures, um, mostly because I'm mapping all over a large part of Los Angeles. And I don't always go to all these locations often, so I don't want to map something and then it gets taken away. So stuff that's government owned and of like mounted sculpture is usually going to be there a while um, versus a lot of privately owned or paint murals, things like that, that get changed out pretty frequently. So those I mostly only do in my immediate neighborhood, so I'll notice. Um, but obviously this is one of those, whatever, whatever you like or into, um, you could map as art. Um, so some guides to finding art, I think half the fun of this is finding stuff that you don't know about that's just around the corner from you. Um, so if you live in any sort of urban area, there's probably um, public art that's either been purchased by the government as part of grant funding or developer funding, or maybe developers have put it out of their own volition. And it's hidden back in various little nooks and crannies and other places that people don't know about. Um, so a few places to look, local government, um, you can do open records requests, look at their websites. Usually they don't have maps or even uh, consistent databases. For example, the city of LA doesn't even know what all they own. And some of these pieces are worth a lot of money. Um, so that's kind of fascinating, the amount, I mean, somebody bought it and then nobody really knows what they have. So, but it's a place to start, see what the local government has. Uh, then there's other people who are just fans, so local blogs, sites, things like that. Wikipedia, again, if you're in a bigger city, they, they usually have lists of public art that folks have put in there. And then there's the good old going for a walk in places that you don't always go. And then once you find these, so this is a great thing that you can do with beginners. I know some of you mentioned you were beginners, or if you're, you know, a, a pro, this is a fun way to introduce kids or uh, other folks in your community. It's typically a point, so you don't have to worry about, you know, drawing exact polygons or lines or anything like that. So once you drop the point of where this piece of art you've found is, um, there's a few tags that you'll do. One is tourism's artwork, which is kind of what's defining this as a piece of art. So that's the most important. The second most important is what type of artwork it is. So in this case, this is a sculpture. It could also be a mural, mosaic. I forget what all there is in there. Um, they're all, you know, fairly intuitive. Um, and then the second two are ones that are really nice to have. So you're giving credit to the artist and also saying what the name of the art is to differentiate it from other pieces of art. And so this is where your kind of sleuthing skills come into play on the internet in terms of finding out what's the name of this piece of art. So in this case, it's called Takeaway. And then the artist's name is Tom Friedman. Um, and so then when people see this, so within just the default base map, if you zoom down in far enough, you'll see um, pieces of public art, which is another reason this is great for beginners because they can see it on that base map right away without having to do anything special. Um, so these little twisty column looking things is the icon for sculptures. And then the words underneath it are the name of that piece of art. So some ideas like what, once you've put all these in, what can you do with it um, to make this uh, even more fun? Um, so you could create a walking tour if there's lots of pieces of uh, art in one area. So if you're in a more downtown or urban area, you might be able to put together a walking tour so people can walk and see multiple pieces of art. Um, if it's a bigger area, if you're a little more rural or suburban, maybe a local guidebook of here's, you know, the dozen or so pieces across our area. And then what I did most recently was a scavenger hunt. So in terms of retrieving art, there's many ways you can do this. An easy way 
to get those out is to use something called Overpass Turbo. Um, and within that, that tag tourism artwork would be what you would use to extract uh, different pieces of public art from around your city. So here we're looking at all these little uh, circles are pieces of public art around West Los Angeles. And so once you get that list, you can kind of decide how you want to structure it. So for the scavenger hunt we did, we selected, I think, 16 different um, pieces of public art or fascinating architecture, artistic architecture around West Los Angeles. And then we went the route of, we told people where the art was, so they went to the art. And then as they were looking at the piece of art, there was a riddle that they had to solve that was associated with it. So you had to kind of see the art to understand the riddle. Um, alternatively, if you wanted to do a scavenger hunt uh, without having to come up with riddles, the hunt could be finding the art. So you could give people clues to find the location or do it kind of like geocaching. Um, so the end result of this, so this was for, for our church. Um, so lots of older folks that have lived in the area for decades, and many of them said, I went to parts of neighborhoods that I've been in, you know, many, many times that I'd never seen before, or I had no idea that this park or this piece of art was here. Um, so it was really fun to see people see their community in a new way. There's something so simple as, you know, taking them to random pieces of public art around town. So if you want to see this whole scavenger hunt thing we did, um, it's on my GitHub there, um, so you can check it all out. And so since this is brief, if you want to connect um, for more of this, uh, there's my Gmail, and I'm on Twitter pretty often as far as social media goes. And that's it. Thank you, guys. Hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about Women Remembered. Um, so this is a new project that we just kind of conceived um, as the, you know, some members of the OSM US community recently. Um, and the focus of this project is to um, map the representation of um, of women um, in public spaces, landmarks, other iconography. Um, it's probably no surprise to anyone here, but the representation of uh, women, specifically like historical and prominent women in these spaces, it, they're largely underrepresented, um, which contributes to a gap in our understanding of what these women have been able to achieve. Um, so we're hoping that through this project, we can help close some of those gaps. Um, so I hope you have your chat at the ready because I have a, some, a little bit of trivia guessing. Um, so I want to see who can um, get closest to these. I don't have any prizes, but we'll see. Um, so first one up, um, your best guess, how many statues do you think um, exist, at least in databases, um, that are properly recorded of prominent women across the US? Let's see. Oh, I can't, uh, oh, there's my chat box. 150, 75, very pessimistic. 86, 50, 90, you're pessimistic, but pretty close. Um, so um, from the surveys that I was able to find, um, there was a couple different ones, um, different methodology, but somewhere between 200 and 400 um, that were documented. Um, and these were a few years old, but that accounted for somewhere between three and eight percent of the um, the statues that were in um, in these databases. So I don't think that that's really changed since that much since the time um, that this was assessed. Um, and shifting a little bit, so here's your second trivia here. Um, same idea, probably percent it might be an easier one, but. Um, what's the percentage you think of street names honoring women that exist across the US? Percent. 20, 1.34. I like the specificity there. 15. So really don't know. Um, so that's that was a trick question for you guys. Um, so if you do know of a magical database that does have this information, please let me know. Um, but from all of my research, I couldn't find anything 
that has assessed or anyone or any project that's assessed um, this figure. There's some really great studies looking at specific cities like Brussels or San Francisco, but um, nothing across the entirety of the US. Um, and for me, my, my favorite thing about mapping, the, the power of mapping is that when we know what exists, that helps us understand what's missing. Um, and so that's what we really need to figure out to start um, a, you know, approaching this gap and trying to balance out this representation. We need to know what already exists and what this, what this difference is. Um, some groups are doing amazing jobs already um, exploring this. So uh, GeoChicas, um, you might have already heard of this project, but they put together this amazing project that's ongoing um, that is trying to map out the um, street names of, um, of women across uh, Spanish speaking cities around the world. Um, and they have this amazing interactive map um, to highlight that. And at the same time, they're looking to understand the gap, gap in Wikipedia as well, because um, uh, something like 17% of Wikipedia biographies are of women. Um, so that gap exists as well. So not only are um, women underrepresented in um, our infrastructure and landmarks, but it's difficult to even find out any information in open knowledge um, platforms about the women we should be celebrating. Um, so on International Women's Day this year, um, a handful of us got together and um, and part part of that um, mappy hour night, we brainstormed some ideas for what we would like to do um, for to address this gap, um, specifically in the US. Um, and we came up with the Women Remembered Project. So um, we already have a um, project page up on the OSM wiki that I would love for you guys to check out. Um, but we're also, um, we also have a spreadsheet where we're trying to capture what exists. Um, so not just mapping um, things that are missing into OpenStreetMap, um, but also documenting um, what already exists in those Wikipedia pages. Um, and hopefully we can create a really cool visualization or something out of this that will um, help us understand these gaps. Um, so a few of the things that we're collecting. Um, so street names, um, many, most of the streets in the US are already pretty well mapped. Um, there is a gap though in the connection to um, Wikipedia pages. So having that connection with those biographies, if they even exist and trying to get those pages up where they don't. Um, there's also a big trend um, in a lot of cities uh, where streets are being renamed um, or um, honorary names are being given um, or even names are being given to unnamed um, roads, such as service roads. Uh, this is a big thing in my city right now in Grand Rapids. There's about five or six roads that were recently given um, names after women um, that weren't in OpenStreetMap. So that's one thing I'm working on. So that's something to that we'll need to be capturing as well. Um, statues and memorials, again, I'm not going to uh, take Bond's sp spotlight here. Um, so um, statues and memorial memorials and artwork as well. We wanted to include that in this project um, to capture that space as well. Um, so not just stopping at street names. Um, yeah, so how you can contribute, we have quite a few different ways. Um, so yeah, adding those um, the existing street names and landmarks um, into our little spreadsheet um, would be great, um, as well as mapping anything that's missing. And yeah, if you are a Wikipedia editor, we could really use your help there too. I've never edited a Wikipedia page, so um, it'd be good to have a few experts kind of helping out with that too. Um, yeah, and if there's anything we should be adding to this data model, um, could definitely use Bond's expertise on the, the art side of it. So um, yeah, shout, give us a shout out. We're um, talking about it in the GeoLadies Slack channel. Um, but yeah, would love everyone to, yeah, help us contribute to this. Thanks.